Okay, good evening. Welcome to our video on this Friday. Today is February the 19th, and I hope you're having a great day and a great week. This will be our final video of, um, of the week, so I hope you have enjoyed uh, what we've done so far, okay? Um, as you know, we are in our tournament. We're looking for the, the number one a most inspirational person of the whole Bible, whether it be men or women, uh, whether it be Old Testament, New Testament. Um, so um, we're going to continue today. Now, uh, what I want to do, though, as we start this video is I want to take uh, just a, a couple of minutes here uh, before we jump into today's lesson and uh, I want to tell you that we are halfway now of the first round, okay? Um, um, we are exactly halfway of the first round. So what I'd like to do is just simply open up this video with a little introduction, um, uh, or better, better said, uh, a little recap of our first half of the first round, okay? So uh, let, me, let me say uh, just a few things here. Uh, first of all, I just want to point out that um, so far through eight videos, we have only had one lady that has advanced to the second round, and that is Mary, the sister of Lazarus. There is seven men and one lady. Um, so I wanted to point that out. Also, so far of the... Of, of what we've seen, it has a lot of New Testament people seem to be uh, doing better, getting more votes than some of the Old Testament. Out of eight videos, we have had six from the New Testament win. The only two Old Testament to advance so far is Jeremiah and Joshua. Also, I'd like to say that little surprisingly here, we have had four lower-ranked people uh, win the video they were in. Four lower-ranked people. And those four is Lazarus, Timothy, Jeremiah, and Mary, the sister of Lazarus. They were lower-ranked, and they won. Um, <clears throat> I would also like to point out that we have so far had no videos that have been close voting. Every video has been a pretty big win for the winner. I think uh, we haven't yet seen a winner win with less than 60% of the votes. I guarantee you, the further we advance in this tournament, the closer the voting will get. Um, and I would also like to point out that we have... Um, as you know, we've done four tournaments so far. This is our fifth. That means there are four winners. All four winners are in this tournament. Well, folks, so far, we have seen one of the four already uh, is now already out of the tournament, and that is the thief on the cross. He is out of the tournament, and so... Um, that leaves only three winners left. Luke, the doctor, is already in the second round. Okay, so just to give you a little preview of what we're going to be seeing in the, in, uh, should I, not second round, but the second half of the first round, here's a little preview. We still have two winners we're going to be seeing. One of them is today, the Apostle John. We'll be seeing him today, and also... Mary Magdalene. We remember her from our ladies tournament. She, we will see her coming up soon. And also, um, we have two people that uh, were runner-ups. They finished second place in their tournament before. They're still in it. One of them is, is uh, let's see, Okay, I, I said something wrong. I just caught a little mistake that I said, folks. I'm sorry. Mary Magdalene is a winner. We'll see her 
The prophet Daniel is the other winner. That was my mistake. The prophet Daniel and Mary Magdalene, we will see the two runner-ups that finish second place. John is one of them, okay? And the other one is the widow lady with two mites. We will see her coming up soon. So folks, I just want to open today's video with that little preview. Um, so by the way, if my calculation is correct, our championship video will be on Monday, April the 12th. So that'll be coming up um, uh, uh, before we know it, the championship. So with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and get into today's video. And uh, um, anyway, I just want to thank you so much. We've had some new voting, new voters in our tournament so far, and uh, we've really grown. So I'm so just so thankful for your participation. Okay, with that being said, let's begin. Now, to give you an update on Wednesday's video, um, if you're wondering the winner, uh, we had on Wednesday uh, the biggest victory yet. Joshua got 90% of the votes, Lady of Canaan 10%. So Joshua has now advanced to the second round. Okay, so that is that. Folks, we're now starting a new region of the tournament today. We are in region one. Today we will be seeing the Apostle John and Tabitha, also known as Dorcas. Okay, Monday we will see James, the brother of Jesus, and Joseph, the dad of Jesus. On next Wednesday, we'll see the lady with the issue of blood, and Boaz, and next Friday, we will see Mordecai from the book of Esther, and Joseph with the coat of many colors. So folks, exciting things to come. Let's jump right in. Today's video is probably going to go a few minutes over because of this little recap that I've done, but I'll try to make this quick and, and simple. Here we go. We're going to begin with Tabitha, and you'll notice that I have her as Tabitha D. That's because she is also known by the name Dorcas, okay? Um, you'll find her in the book of Acts. She only appears in one story, and uh, um, <clears throat> um, she, in that story... Um, we see how special of a lady that she was. So we're told that, uh, that uh, just starting off here, we're told that she was what's called a lady disciple, okay? A lady disciple. So I'm going to write that first of all. Okay, now, please don't get the wrong idea. I'm not saying that this lady was some kind of a preacher or something. The word disciple does not mean that. Um, it literally means uh, a worker, um, busy for Christ, a student of Christ. So, but, you know, the Bible doesn't use that word much, uh, quite often for ladies, but we are told that she was a lady disciple, okay? Now, the second thing is what most people know about her is that we are told that she would make coats, you know, for cold weather. You put a coat on, stay warm. We're told that she made many coats and garments for people. She was a giver, Um that's what she was known as. She just went around giving to people of things that she made. She took the time to make them. So I want to write, second of all, that she was a giver. And I'm going to write, maker of coats. 
folks, I must say that if you're looking for what you can do for the Lord, I know many people that um, they want God to work in their life, but they don't know what to do. Please use this wonderful lady, Tabitha, as an example. Uh, she got busy doing what she knew she could do. She was good at making things, sewing and, and knitting and stuff. So she did that as a ministry. Whatever you're good at doing, do it for the Lord. But now, folks, we're told uh, that she, in, in the story, she passes away. And we're told that it, it really saddened, like, the whole city. She lived in a city known as Joppa. And uh, we're told that many people came to, to, to see her, her body after she had died because they were weeping and mourning for her. Uh, and, and the Bible says some of them were bringing the quilts and, and the coats and stuff she had made. And they were reminiscing of how special of a lady that she was. So I just simply want to write, third of all, uh, that she had an impact on others. Okay? And I'm just going to write over here as a little side note that many were weeping, okay? As I've said before, folks, it's really hard for me to fit everything on the board. I only have so much space to work with, um, but you know what I mean by this. I just explained it. She had such an impact on other people. So many of them came weeping, broken because of her death. But folks, if you know your Bible, they, they were so saddened by her death that they called for the Apostle Peter to come and maybe, if possible, bring her back to life. And folks, I'm going to tell you, God did a miracle. God brought her back to life in that story. But listen to this. This is the final thing I want to say. We're told that when that happened, God restored her life to her. That we're told many people believed in the Lord Jesus because of what they saw happen in her life. In other words, God used her and her story to draw people to him. So I want to write that last of all. God used her to draw people to him. Okay? Amen. God used her to draw people to him. In other words, people got saved by seeing this. It reminds me of the story of Lazarus. When God brought him back to life, many people said, oh my goodness, Jesus can, has the power over death. And they put their faith. So very similar. Okay. By the way, Tabitha, <clears throat> back in our third tournament that we did, the ladies tournament, she made it all the way to the semifinals and was one vote shy of being in the championship video. <clears throat> Now, with all that being said, folks, let's get into the number one ranked person of the tournament. Folks, there's a reason this man is number one. Now, I must say, I do not think that this is an obvious win for him in this video. This is a wonderful lady, Tabitha, with a wonderful story. But folks... This man, the Apostle John, is very deserving of the number one spot. Just to let you know, back in the first tournament that we did, back many, many months ago, he was in the championship video and came up only two votes short of the victory in that championship. He is the number one ranked person here. Now, to start off with, folks, there is so much that I could say about him. 
I have a list a mile long almost to, to tell you of him. But I want to narrow it to just four things as usual. The first thing is, we're told that he had a special title. It was something that he was known as. Okay? Now, I'm not referring to the nickname he and his brother had. He and his brother had a nickname, Boanerges, which meant the Sons of Thunder. But this man, John here, he was known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Okay? So I'm going to write that up here. First of all, he was known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Okay. If you're wondering where you'll find that in the Bible, if you look in John chapter 12, I think, maybe chapter 15, somewhere right there in that, in that time, um, the Last Supper, Jesus and the 12 disciples were told that one of the 12 was leaning on the Lord and just hung, hugging up to Jesus that night. And, uh, and we're told that, that that man was John the Apostle. Amen. He was known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Please understand, Jesus loved everybody. Amen. He came to the earth because of he loved the world to die for our sins. Um, and he loved all the disciples. But there was something very special about John, okay? So that was a nickname that he began to be known by. People would call him that. Now, the second thing I want to tell you is very obvious. We all know the New Testament begins with four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're the four men who had the pleasure to write the story of the life of Jesus, if you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote very similar. They wrote kind of at the same time. They have a lot of the same stories. John wrote his gospel many years later, like 20 years later. And he put so many new details that the other three didn't. So many people love the book of John as their favorite gospel. But I want to write up here that he is the writer of... A gospel. Amen. Please remember the word gospel literally means truth. And we use that to refer to those four books about the life of Jesus. He is the writer of one of the four, perhaps the most detailed of the four. Number three that I would like to put here may be my most favorite detail of him. We are told that at Mount Calvary, you probably know where I'm going with this, not many of Jesus' followers showed up. Uh, many of them forsook him. But John was one of very few who came all the way to Mount Calvary, risking his own life to be there to support Jesus. Even at Mount Calvary, Jesus said to him to take care of his mother, Jesus' mother Mary, he said, John, take care of her for me. So I want to write, third of all, he was the only apostle at Mount Calvary. Okay. Only apostle at Mount Calvary. Out of 12 apostles, he's the only one who showed up. Okay. And folks, one last thing. I want you to know that John, not only did he write the gospel, the book of John, he wrote five books total. He wrote the book of John, which is the story of Jesus' life. He wrote three letters known as 1 John, 2 John, and 3 John. And the fifth book that he wrote is what I want to put right here. He is the writer of Revelation. Okay? I'm going to write that up here, writer of 
the book of Revelation. Now, folks, the reason that that is such a wonderful thing, as you know, Revelation literally means to reveal. Revelation. God gave no one else but this man the vision of how everything would come to an end. And folks, I think we're getting very close to that. You see, John was basically a prisoner at this point. And Jesus showed him this wonderful vision, and he wrote it down in a book called Revelation. It's probably the best prophecy book, definitely, of the New Testament, possibly of the whole Bible, the book of Revelation. So, folks, that is the story of John. That is the story of Tabitha Dorcas. I think they're both worthy of votes. I ask you, please don't vote who's more famous. Please vote for which person of the two, just their life, their story, their character, their heart just touches you in a special way, maybe a little bit more than the other one. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video today. Uh, please tune back in on Monday so we have another special video then. I hope you have a great weekend and a great day. So we'll see you next time. God bless you.